On today's show, Cadillac finally unveils the Lyric EV and tells us very little about it in the process. Nicola Motors publishes some strange financials indeed. And Johnny Cash's old Rolls Royce gets a full Tesla transplant. And I do mean full. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and we're 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another Ecotech Roundup show. I hope that you and yours are safe and that your week has been an excellent one. Thanks for joining me. It's been teased for months and at the tail end of last week, we finally got to see the all new Cadillac Lyric EV for the very first time, thanks to an online reveal event. And while the Cadillac Lyric may not be coming to New Zealand at all, I felt it was well worth covering here. This all new electric crossover makes use of GM's Ultium battery pack, offers 300 miles of range, 150 kilowatts DC quick charging and up to 19 kilowatts of AC charging power on board. Inside, there's the usual Cadillac luxury, as well as a massive 33-inch curved display, dual-zone head-up display, and the latest iteration of Super Cruise. But while Cadillac's team talked lots about the car's design, no official specs were given, and the whole event seemed a bit of a letdown because of it. US customers will get to see the Lyric hit the roads sometime in 2022, with Chinese market buyers most likely getting it a year ahead of that. Jaguar may be struggling to sell its iPACE electric crossover to customers in the US, but that doesn't mean the brand is feeling down about its first electric car. Indeed, Jaguar is already eagerly continuing iPACE development and refinement, thanks in part to lessons learned in the iPACE eTrophy race series. Describing the series as an amazing testbed, Steve Bolter, Vehicle Integration Manager for iPACE, told Green Car Reports that software updates like changed charging rates, better torque delivery, better regenerative braking, and smarter active radiator vein activation are a direct result of the iPACE's time on the track. Jaguar says it will implement even more of the lessons learned in its iPACE 2.0, which is due to make a cover as a 2021 model year car. A German upper court has affirmed the decision of a lower court in banning a Tesla Model 3 owner for driving for one month after he crashed into a road sign and several trees. The driver, who has not been named, says that he was trying to adjust his windscreen wipers on his Model 3 at the time of the accident, which meant that he had to turn his attention to the car's centre touchscreen rather than the road ahead. As many of you have noted, it is possible to change the wiper settings from automatic to manual and change the speed of the wipe without really using the centre touchscreen menu system all that much. But it's still a lot more distracting than the conventional stalk mounted wiper control that's become de facto on most cars today. While Tesla's design certainly didn't help here, it's ultimately the driver, not the car, which is at fault. When the Audi e-tron launched in the US, its starting price was an eye-watering $74,800. But for the 2021 model year, Audi has just confirmed that will drop by nearly $9,000 US dollars to $65,900 US dollars. In addition, thanks to some tweaks to Audi's battery management system, Audi is now claiming a range of 222 miles per charge, 18 miles more than the previous model years. While that's not quite good enough to catch Model Y in either range or price matters, Audi's price drop does put the e-tron as a much more palatable cross shop against the Q7 or the Q8. It's still not a conquest vehicle, but if it gets Audi customers plugging in, well, that's OK by me. Thanks to a reverse merger earlier this year, Nikola Motors is now a publicly traded company, and that means it's just published its first ever quarterly earnings report. Like most startups, its balance sheet shows anything but profits within the company, and the company burned through $86,642,000, equating to a loss of 33 cents per share this quarter. Its only revenue, $36,000 for installing solar panels purchased by the company founder and executive chairman, Trevor Milton. It's not clear if that $32.5 million ranch Milton purchased last year after Nikola got a $3 billion valuation was where the panels were installed. 
But what is detailed in the quarterly earnings is the $70,000 reimbursement for Milton's use of a private plane for company business. Uh, Milton also happens to be the owner of Zero Expedition LLC, a company which owns, among other things, a $13 million jet that's leased to Nikola Motors when it's required. Frankly, I have nothing to say. If you want lots of fast charging capability in an electric car, as well as a reliable rapid charging network, you will choose a Tesla. After all, Tesla has the supercharger network and some of the fastest charging speeds of any car on sale today. In most of Europe, Tesla superchargers are capable of providing up to 150 kilowatts of power in peak conditions to charge customers' cars. But this week, Inside EVs reported that European Tesla owners say that Tesla appears to have restricted superchargers to a maximum of 120 kilowatts. While customers can charge faster using other charging stations, such as the CCS stations operated by Onity, Tesla superchargers are nearly always restricting levels to 120 kilowatts, which leaves owners frustrated. Tesla hasn't provided an official explanation, but one theory is that charging speed is being limited due to the heat waves currently being experienced in much of the European continent. Well, Henrik Fisker stated a few weeks ago that he was working with Volkswagen on negotiating a license to use the Volkswagen MEB platform as the basis for the upcoming Fisker Ocean and other future Fisker models, it appears that negotiations are actually off for the summer. That's because we're now in August, the time when many European companies simply shut up shop or at least put things on hold until the start of the autumn. One company doing that apparently is Volkswagen, who has even sent its CEO and his daughter off on a summer road trip in a pre-production ID3. With fewer executives in the office, it means that Henrik Fisker will likely have to wait until September, or maybe even October, before negotiations can continue. It's not clear if this will change the production schedule for the ocean or not. This year has been crazy, with plenty of large sporting events suffering as COVID sweeps the world. Formula E has been influenced by this, like many race series. But right now at the Tempelhof airfield in Berlin, Germany, Formula E is holding a six-race bonanza to make up for all the cancelled races earlier this year and to decide this year's champion. So far, two of the races have taken place, with Antonio Felix da Costa taking both chequered flags for DS Cheetah. But with Round 8 and 9 taking place this weekend and the two final races taking place on Wednesday and Thursday next week, there is most definitely still time to catch the action. Talking of racing, the Ford Mustang Mark E 1400 one-off performance car that we told you about a few weeks ago, you know, the one that has seven motors and more than a megawatt of power at the wheels, will be making its NASCAR debut this week. But rather than take to the track on the big day, it turns out that the debut will be a virtual one, with a special feature ad due to air this weekend on NBC during the channel's usual NASCAR coverage. To film the feature video, Vaughn Gittin Jr. and Joey Logano took to the Mark E 1400 and went out on the Romeo Proving Grounds in Michigan, where Ford does a lot of its proving work and development on new cars. We've not seen the resulting video yet, but I'm guessing if previous videos are anything to go by, it's going to be a really good one. A new report from the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory in the United States, or PNNL for short, suggests that the electric grid planning in the US Western Power Grid region is not prepared for the advent of electric vehicles. The study goes into quite a lot of depth, talking about duck curves and potential brownouts, particularly from high-powered quick charging stations in parts of the US, like Los Angeles. But as we've covered on this channel before, time of use charging, smart charging, and even using grid-tied batteries alongside rapid charging stations can all help smooth out demand and alleviate any issues caused by everyone plugging in at the same time. And since I've covered plenty about this on the channel, I'm not super worried about this report. It's pretty simple. If you use a charge timer at night, you're helping, not hindering the grid. And depending on where you are in the world, there are now some great products on the market that help you take advantage of smart charging using periods where the grid is making just too much power to fill your ride up. And finally, a 1970 Rolls-Royce long wheelbase that was once owned by the music icon that was the late Johnny Cash broke cover this week as a fully electric resto mod. 
The car, purchased at auction several years ago by an anonymous bidder, was taken to Shift EV in Albany, Oregon, where, at the new owner's request, an entire brand new Tesla Model S was stripped down before every last bit of its drivetrain, battery pack, power electronics at all was fitted into the Rolls. The result is a classic Rolls Royce with Tesla power, Tesla ABS and Tesla charging. Except it looks almost 100% stock. We were one of the two film crews that were given time to spend with this car, so be sure to check out our in-depth interview with the team behind this amazing vehicle when we're done here. Which, as it happens, is in about 60 seconds. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And while you have that browser open, if you haven't already, please do consider switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. They make it super easy to make the switch, and when you do, you're going to be helping New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean, green, renewable power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. And don't forget, the Model Y is still doing winter testing on the South Island, so if you see one, let us know. I'll be making some more fun content for you all to enjoy next week, but until then, remember to stay safe, wash your hands, and keep healthy. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time!